Hey, everybody, I'm here to review Church and State. If you can't see it, Church and State in Ethiopia, 15 or 1270 to 1527 by Professor Tadessa Ta'amrat. I transliterate things a little bit differently than he did, but there are a lot of reasons for that, and I may have to write a book about that one day. This is the old school version, uh, not the latest one that's a high sells. It's got some uh, interesting maps inside. It also has uh, some nice random images throughout in the beginning. You have this little painting towards the end. They have some historic paintings inside. Anyway, the book kind of begins by talking about briefly the fall of the Aksumite period sometime, you know, around 900 into the Zagwe kingdom from the Zagwe kingdom where some Kushites are ruling in Lasta, what is modern day Wadlo or modern day Amhara region. That dynasty is taken over in 1270 by a specific group of people from Amhara, which is also in that Wadlo area, but more Southern, more bordering what used to be known as Shoah. All this is still in the Amhara region. And you get these Kings in Shoah predominantly uh, until the 1500s when Gurain and his armies backed by the Ottomans, the Yemenis and other Arabs come from the east as well as the Oromo come from the south and really ravage what was known as the Christian, the Christian kingdom of Aksum and, and the remnants thereof. In some way they survive with the help of the Portuguese and and they last until the communist takeover in 1974. And then there's another regime, regime change in 1991 that gives us the current regime. And at least the figurehead of that has changed in the past two years. So anyway, all that is traceable to this book. And in this book, it talks about what was medieval Ethiopia like. Medieval Ethiopia was filled with the remnants of the Aksumite kingdom, which would be a Christian kingdom, but various kind of groups that were loosely confederated or affiliated to form a larger Christian kingdom. And a lot of vassal states that were Jewish in this book, it uses the term Falasha. Nowadays we say Beta Israel. Um, it uses the term, uh, uh, it has, it has, pagan as a term in here that some people don't like you could say polytheistic nowadays it has another term that i just find to be obtuse it says secular priests he says secular priests a lot which by that he means married priests so he talks a lot about the difference between the married priests and the various monastic schools from which there is far more learning although of course there are married priests who go to those schools there are also kings who hide out in these schools while they're next in line to be king, but not king yet. There's also the famous prison, which is a Gishin Mariam. It was just a Gishin Mariam holiday that we celebrated. And that's where a lot of the princes were kept as well. So anyway, it talks about Adal, which was a Somali sultanate or a Muslim kingdom. It talks about Fat Agar and Dawaro, Bali, uh, Gwajam, Matakal, Matekal, which was in the news recently. Um, overall, it's very interesting. One of the, th the big things that surprised me was Wagara, which is a region of Gwandar, was still in the medieval period, Falasha or Beta Israel dominated. And so it was in this time period that it becomes more Semiticized, more Aksumized, more Christianized. And pretty much there in Gwandar and in Tigray and in parts of Gwajam as in East Gwajam, parts of Wallo as in Lasta and Amhara, parts of Northern Shoa, you have these pockets of the Christian kingdom that get established. But again, they get run roughshod by the invasion from the East, from the Adal Sultanate that is uh, teamed up with Harar, teamed up with the Ottoman Turks and teamed up with the Yemenis and other Arabs, as I mentioned, and the, the Oromo who come from the South. This book uses the term Galla, of course, because it's an older book. It's from the 70s. So 
it talks about that expansion or invasion, whatever term you want to use from the south, and definitely invasion from the east that almost wiped Ethiopia out. There are these episodes, right? You have the fall of the Aksumite civilization in the 900s, which a lot of people attribute to Yodit Gudit. And I've heard a lot of different accounts about her. You know, is she a Jewish queen? Is she a pagan queen? What exactly was she? I'll have to go read uh, Professor Sergo Habla Sedlasi's book to get a little bit more information on that. But basically, Sergo Habla Sedlasi, Tadessa Ta'amrat, Marid Welda Aragai, these people, along with Sven Rubinson, the foreigner, and later on, Geta Chohaile, um, Professor Masvin Waldemariam, who passed away recently, um, Alula Abata, these were the OG kind of historians, geographers, Ethiopianists par excellence of the 20th century. So church and state tells you about, again, what was the pagan kingdom of Hadia, which later becomes a Muslim sultanate, the various Afar sultanates, the Somali sultanate, the Semitic speakers that are Harar, uh, in Harar and in Gurage, who this book postulates were former Aksumites left in the south. And there's a constant ebbing and flowing of the empire throughout different ages. The empire expands and then it retreats. It expands and re retreats because the strongest stronghold has always been in, in the kind of Tigray region and parts of Ertra. And, and later on, Gondar or Bagemdar gets strengthened as well. But pretty much everything else is up for grams, uh, grabs, especially the hinterlands. If we're talking about near what is modern day Djibouti, if we're talking about what is the modern day Somali region of Ethiopia, the modern day southern regions and southwestern regions, a lot of those those kind of periphery peoples, their their territories exchange hands a lot of time, and there's a lot of mixing. But the strongest holds that we see are, as I said, in what used to be called Gwandar and what is still called Tigray. And then, as I said, there are those pockets in what was called Gwajam or the Bahardar area in northern Shoa and in parts of Wallo. And we see that kind of today as well, where the Orthodox Church is strongest, are those areas in which, because church and state were one, that the Christian kingdom was able to rally itself as a united front of a religious political identity. And so the modern nation state of Ethiopia, a lot of things we attribute to it, hearken back to the things that went on. There are medieval theological controversies. There are some people who like to be decentralized. There are others who want to impose their will on the peoples, notably emperors at Ayakob. There's less in, about the Stephanite clashes and, and more about the Eustatios clashes, which enter into Eritrean history as well. It's very fascinating. So I highly recommend this book if you want to know how Ethiopia was almost destroyed twice. Again, the first time by Yodit Gudit, the second time by the twin attack from the east and the south. And what happened in between, what sort of glories were there, and what are the remnants and fragments that we're still trying to pick up today? And next, I want to check out Marid Walda Aragai, Professor Marid Walda Aragai's book, which takes us from 1500 to 1700. Then I'll probably throw it back to Sirgo Habla Selassie's book, which is more the ancient period before 1270. Peace.